Here, Iran's announcement of its second nuclear facility has sparked condemnation from the West. And leaders of the U.S., France and Britain condemned Tehran on Friday for deceiving the international community. Iran must comply with U.N. Security Council resolutions and make clear it is willing to meet its responsibilities as a member of the community of nations. Former U.S. President Jimmy Carter has again come under fire in the U.S. mainstream media since publicly saying that Israel has 150 or more nuclear weapons in its arsenal. Details about Israel's nuclear weapons program started emerging in 1986. International nuclear experts now believe that Israel maintains a cache of between 100 and 300 nuclear weapons, though Israel, backed by the U.S., maintains a policy of nuclear ambiguity. Well, now it appears that he's giving out secret information <laughs> about Israel and how many nuclear weapons they may have. Yeah. Accordingly, to, to most people, this information has never been made public before. At right. least the U.S. has not fully right. covered. A long list of Western countries who'd be very embarrassed if a new news story ever got out. Norway is one that supplied the heavy water for the reactor. France, of course, supplied the reactor. Britain also supplied heavy water, and the United States arranged for quite a large amount of highly enriched uranium to be shipped to Israel. So all of these countries are complicit. America was the key. A secret agreement allowed Israel to have nuclear weapons. In a meeting between the Prime Minister of Israel, Golda Meir, in 1969, September 69, when she visited the White House, and U.S. President Richard Nixon, the ground rules that in fact govern the way that Israel conduct this business at home, but also in terms of dealing with the United States and the rest of the world, were determined. And not much has changed ever since. It was agreed the Israelis could keep their bombs, but they must remain secret, because publicly, America was against nuclear proliferation. This could uh, make uh, someone like Iran say, look, if Israel has 150 nuclear weapons, why shouldn't we be a nuclear power at a time when the U.S. is trying to make sure that Iran does not get nuclear weapons? But the Iranian government must now demonstrate through deeds its peaceful intentions or be held accountable to international standards and international law. As for the issue of nuclear weapons in the Middle East, the solution is actually quite simple. Resolutions to declare the Middle East a zone free of nuclear weapons has been on the table of the UN Security Council since 1974, when Iran first moved such a resolution. Egypt moved that resolution again in 1985, and Syria in 1989, and again in 2003, on behalf of the group of Arab states. No such resolution can be seriously considered in the Security Council because the U.S. would veto it and the U.S. would veto it because a nuclear weapons free zone in the Middle East would require Israel to get rid of its nuclear arsenal. The U.N. Nuclear Agency has adopted a new resolution. It calls on all Middle East nations to reject atomic bombs. The symbolic vote shows growing consensus for that measure. The Iranian envoy to the nuclear agency back the International Atomic Energy Agency's resolution, but he accused Israel of causing what he called a vicious cycle in the region. If the Israelis were not the obstacle, we should have had nuclear weapon free zone in the Middle East for the last 30 years. Therefore, this is the main obstacle, and therefore the international community has put pressure in order that this obstacle will be removed. Israel is one of only three countries worldwide outside the nuclear non-proliferation treaty. The other two are India and Pakistan. It is also widely assumed to have the Middle East's only nuclear arsenal, though it has never confirmed or denied it. The issue of establishing a Middle Eastern zone free of nuclear weapons has been on the IAEA agenda for 16 years, despite the fact that Thursday's vote on the subject was only the fourth in its history. Andrew Dupuy, CCTV. 
Well, to our top story today in Vienna, the International Atomic Energy Agency meeting has passed a resolution directly criticizing Israel and its atomic program for the first time in 18 years. Of the 115 nations present at the meeting, 49 voted for the resolution and 45 were against and 16 abstained. And the result once again exposed the deep divide gripping so, IAEA meetings. The, the United States today, and its allies consider Iran the greatest proliferation threat, fearing that Tehran is trying to achieve uh, the capability to uh, make nuclear which, weapons. Uh, While many other nations, particularly Arab and Islamic countries, insist that Israel is the true danger in the Middle East. Israel has refused to admit having such arms, but is universally believed so to possess the them. Iran hailed the resolution, calling it a glorious moment. Iran is breaking rules that all nations must follow, endangering the global non-proliferation regime and threatening the stability and security of the region and the world. The Iranian ambassador to the International Atomic Energy Agency has accused the U.S. of double standards over the issue of nuclear energy. Ali Asghar Sultanieh says the U.S. has banned Iran's peaceful nuclear program, but on the other hand, did nuclear trading with India, which did not sign the Nuclear Non-Proliferation Treaty. The Iranian ambassador has been says the policy has been undermining the credibility, integrity of the treaty. He also says the U.S has ulterior motives in the nuclear cooperation agreement with India. France and India have signed a deal allowing French companies to sell civilian nuclear technology to India. It follows a similar pact between India and the U.S. which... And Russia is to build four nuclear reactors at a power plant in India. That's just one of some 60 agreements that have been signed by the leaders of the two states during... The United States will provide nuclear fuel and technology to India. The U.S. Senate gave final approval on Wednesday to a landmark deal ending its 30-year ban on nuclear trade with India. Months after the opening of India to civilian nuclear trade with the world, the country is already shopping. Russia, France and the United States are now competing for billions of dollars worth of contracts. The U.S. and India have agreed on a defense pact that could permit the sale of sophisticated American arms to the South Asian country. The announcement came in New Delhi after talks between U.S. Secretary of State Hillary Clinton and Indian Foreign Minister S.M. Krishna. India has become the sixth country in the world to build its own nuclear-powered submarine capable of firing missiles. Moscow has played a vital role in the construction of the current sub. INS Arihant is the first of two submarines to be built by India with technical help from Russia. Well, nine countries it's yet to ratify the Comprehensive Nuclear Test Ban Treaty face mounting pressure to sign the agreement at a UN Ministerial Conference in New York. Today, and the two-day conference is the sixth of its kind to facilitate the treaty's entry into force. It's also the first time in a decade that the United States has participated. The treaty was signed 13 years ago by then U.S. President Bill Clinton, but it was rejected in the U.S. Senate three years after. Confronted by the serial deception of many years, the international community has no choice today but to draw a line in the sand.